Joining us again today is Congressman Guy Rushenfeller from the 14th Congressional District right here in Pennsylvania, a very key state in this upcoming election. So good to have you on with us again. A lot going on. Rose, I always enjoy coming on. So thanks again for having me on your show. Absolutely. We have to talk about um, A.G. Barr. And I saw when you were questioning him and, uh, you know, it's amazing because the left was really looking for a sound bite and never got it. He answered everything so perfectly. You did a great job when you Thanks. were questioning him. I, I, I'm so glad you brought up some of the things you did. Let's talk about what you discussed with him because you talked about the lawlessness and how this really is an example of what the agenda is from the left. It is. So I'll talk about the Democrats questioning in a, in a second if you give me a chance. But when I was questioning A.G. Barr, I really wanted to use that time to impeach or what we lawyers call impeaching uh, witnesses. The only difference is the witnesses I was trying to impeach weren't witnesses. It was really uh, Chairman Jerry Nadler and then Congresswoman Jaya Paul. So Jerry Nadler had said just a few days prior that the chaos in Portland is a quote unquote myth that is only circulated in D.C., Clearly, that's not the case. So I asked A.G. Barr about it, and he said, no, there's actually instances of federal officers being permanently blinded because these protesters are you is using lasers. And he said some other things about Portland, but it basically discredited A.G. Uh, Barr basically used that, that to discredit Jerry Nadler, who, who is putting his head in the sand regarding uh, Portland and Seattle. Then when it came to Jayapal, Congresswoman Jayapal, who represents downtown Seattle, yeah. is called Chaz a uh, quote-unquote peaceful protest zone. We, we know that's not the case. So I asked Attorney General Barr about the, the death of the 16-year-old, the 19-year-old, the assaults, the, the robberies, all the violence that's in downtown Seattle. And he, and he said there was violence. So it really made Jerry Nadler and, and, and Jaya Paul, and frankly, the rest of the Democrats, uh, look ridiculous. The fact that they will not call these protests violent, uh, the fact that they turn a blind eye to this chaos that you're seeing erupt in Portland and Seattle. You know, and I think it's interesting too, because a couple of things, first of all, it's no longer trending. And I think the Democrats are really disappointed. And I think it's because of the work that you did. And of course, the responses that our, uh, that AG Barr had given. And because of that, it really isn't trending much anymore uh, the way they wanted it to on social media. Also, if you think about when they did send federal enforcement agents into Portland, it's interesting because news stories, even though there were 50 days of violence, right? 50 days right. of unrest. The news stories were all like, well, as soon as the federal agents left, it was peaceful again. As, as though it, were their, it was their fault that there, there was unrest. So well, this, this is a tactic, Rose, this is a tactic of the, the far left and now, frankly, the Democrats because they've been co-opted by the far left. But they always want to conflate arguments yes. and they always want to obscure the truth. And you see it with, this is a great example because they obscure the truth and they conflate different things. The federal officials, or the federal officers, I should say, were in uh, Portland to protect the U.S. courthouse. It wasn't like they came in, there were riots. There were riots, and then the federal officials came in to protect federal property. But this is, the, again, the left conflates and misleads and obscures the truth, and you're seeing that over and over. But I also think one of the reasons why we're seeing the news cycle shift now is because the... Uh, because swing voters were starting to see through this. They don't like the chaos that's erupting in Seattle and Portland. That's part of it. Another part of it is this, is that the, the protesters are now going after the Democrat elected officials in those areas. So, so now it's very difficult for them to control the, the narrative because these anarchists, which is really what they are, they're yeah. anti-anarchists, they're, anarchists, they're, they're violent extremist groups, are now turning against the Democrat party, which, which befuddles me because the Democrats are trying to treat these folks with kid gloves, those protesters, those that are engaged in rioting and looting, they hate the Democrats just as bad as they hate the Republicans. Oh yeah, they they they're, they're, they like, they hate everybody. You know, it doesn't matter who's in control, and that's a lesson that the Democrats are going to learn the hard way. Because at this moment, I don't think they have a clue. They, they, they the Democrats don't. It's very hard. It's very hard to see what's happening in your own party. It's easier to look from the outside in, and I can tell yeah. you. I'm, I'm clearly on the outside of the Democrat Party, right? I've been a Republican since, since, you know, since I knew what political parties were. But looking from the outside in at that party, it's no longer the Democrat Party. I say over and over, this is no longer the party of JFK. This is no longer your grandfather's Democrat Party. It's okay. a really Democrat in name only. Really what it is, is a, it's a social justice Democrat Party or 
social justice warrior party. They're going to pick their own name, but they're not the Democrats anymore. More that's really the platform of AOC, the platform of Bernie Sanders that's taken over. And there's no no such thing as a moderate Democrat. The blue dog Democrats are now all Trump Republicans. Yep. You are so right about that. And I, I love to, I mean, one of the things that came out of that when you were talking a lot about this is just that take a look at this, people, because this is the future that the current Democratic Party, the progressives want for you in this country. Well, so I said that to Attorney General Barr in the yeah, hearing. I, okay. I, I said, look, today, today's Portland, today's Seattle is really tomorrow's America if Joe Biden wins the election. Yes. Because let's get one thing straight. Joe Biden might be the guy that's on the ticket. He's, a, he's an empty suit at this point. He's not going to control anything. It'll be the uh, radical leftists that are, that's around him. So it's Biden's name on the ticket, but it's the agenda of Bernie Sanders. So what we're seeing play out in the Pacific Northwest, and we're talking about Seattle and Portland, right? Because the, the eastern parts yeah. of those states are actually yeah. fairly conservative, but I digress. What we're seeing in Portland and Seattle is really what the Democrats want to do nationally. They, they, they're encouraging this chaos. Yeah, I agreed. And you know, and it is happening in other cities, um, New York City and, and places in Texas. It's, it's, it's really a shame because the mainstream media is not showing anyone, um, unless you're watching Fox News or One American News, but videos, people are taking videos and they're posting them. So the internet is really getting the story out. I want to jump to the stimulus um, package because we, we're at, we've got a deadline, right? The administration is favoring a reduced uh, uh, amount for unemployment. And uh, the Democrats, again, are holding certain things hostage and they're just not working with the Republicans. What are we looking at right now? What's going on? Let me just start by saying this. Rahm Emanuel put it best. We said, don't ever let a crisis go to waste. That's the mindset of the Democrats. And we're seeing them take advantage of this pandemic. We saw it actually from the very start of it. And it's playing out till now. So what the Democrats want is, well, they keep changing what they want. I'll give you a good example. They wanted $100 billion for education funding. The Senate Republicans came out and said, we'll not only go $100 billion for state or for education funding, we'll actually do $105 billion. Then the Democrats came back and said they wanted $300 or $400 billion. They keep moving the goalpost on us. It's very hard to do that. And they've, and they've just flatly, as of the end of this week, they've just flatly said they're not going to negotiate. So at this point, Senate Republicans would have to negotiate with themselves, which we know that's not how negotiation works. The bottom line is this. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, the far left Democrats are using the American people as pawns to advance their far left socialist agenda. And that's what we're seeing. You know, and, and I want to say, too, when if they want to continue to keep the unemployment benefits as high as they have been, this is going to destroy businesses. I, there are signs, help wanted signs on just about every right. building that I pass anymore. And we cannot conduct business or expect to get back some of that business if those owners don't have employees to work for them. I mean, it just, and, and the Democrats, I mean, this is so typical of the Democrats. It's just so typical. The rest of us well, are well, well, happening at stake. Well, therein lies the problem of having the, the enhanced unemployment benefits. I don't want to begrudge anybody money, but think no. about it. In most places in the United States, actually, it's about 70% of those that are getting paid this enhanced unemployment compensation. It's more than they would make if they went back to work. So again, I don't want to begrudge anybody money, but no. we don't want to disincentivize people from going back to work because right. what, that, what happens is then these businesses can't reopen and the economy continues to stagnate. Right. So if we need to take a look at reducing that amount, the Republicans in the center are saying 200, the Democrats are saying 600. If I were a betting man, I'd probably guess it's somewhere in between. But we should maybe look at capping it to say you can't make more on unemployment than you would if you were working or at least throttle right. it back to maybe 70%. Because it, it's having two effects, Rose, just real fast. One, people aren't going back to work, so there's a labor shortage. And again, that's hurting the entire economy because businesses cannot reopen, they can't expand, et cetera. Right. The other thing that it's doing is when people do go back to work, small businesses have to pay above and beyond fair market wages because they have to then compensate for the $600 extra a week that people would make staying at home. So it's really having a perverse incentive on the workforce, which, which again, is, is stagnating the economy and keeping us from having a full recovery like we should be having. Yeah, I agree. 
Let's talk about uh, China. One of the things I was so excited about is what your involvement and looking into China and, and holding them responsible for COVID and other things. Um, Nancy Pelosi and Schiff seem to be really digging their feet in and they just don't even want to look at it, it seems like. I mean, what are you up against right now where China's concerned? I'm still trying to figure out just what the Chinese Communist Party has on the Democrat Party, because whatever it is, I want to know, because it seems that the Democrats will not go along with even questioning China or China's motives. Uh, we know that this pandemic came from Wuhan, came from China. There's very good evidence that the Chinese, through their negligence, allowed this pandemic to spread throughout the world. The Democrats won't even let us talk about that. So again, I want to see, I want to know exactly what the CCP has on the Democrat Party because it's got to be something. Okay. Um, one more thing, just real quick. I um, saw the vice president yesterday. Uh, we, there was a Cops for Trump event and I talked to a lot of law enforcement. I have to tell you, I was so moved by the entire event, but I was really moved by the number of law enforcement who are so, they're discouraged. I talked to one man who said, I've got three and a half years left and I pray every day that I can make it through those three and a half years. But um, they were supporting this president in great numbers. And I did ask specifically, are you noticing a trend in law enforcement from perhaps those who have long time, have been longtime Democrats who are now voting for this president? And they said, yes, absolutely. So I was, a, I was a magisterial district judge for a period of time, uh, friends with a lot of police officers, and they text me a lot. And I'll tell you what, it's really upsetting getting these texts because a lot of them feel that the public has turned on them. And I say, look, this is, the silent majority is called silent for a reason because they're silent. Now we can talk about whether we should be silent as I a majority agree. or not, <laughs> but, uh, but most people are with the police officers because yeah. most people would prefer safety to chaos. Of course, yeah. that's just, uh, and, the, and the police have been not have been treated very poorly by the Democrats and the, the far left Democrats in particular. But the vast majority of Americans are with the police. And of course, there's bad apples. Those bad apples are being prosecuted right now. Um, but we the police need to know that we're we're supportive of them, that we appreciate what they do. And, and think about think about being a police officer. Every time a police officer makes a traffic stop, for example. He or she doesn't know if it's going to be a routine stop, if there's going to be a gun pulled. Oh, no. It's really a life and death situation. That's why, we, that's why defunding the police makes absolutely no sense. We should actually increase funding to make sure they have uh, PTSD treatment, mental health uh, care that's available to them. Police are actually more likely to die by suicide than in the line of duty, which shows you the mental health care crisis that we have in our law enforcement community. And, and of course, first responders, EMT, firefighters, and so forth. But it, it, we're going to actually exacerbate the problem when we defund the police, uh, because if we take away these resources, the problems will get worse. And we also won't be able to recruit good police officers. That's right. Absolutely right. Well, keep up the good work and we appreciate it. And thanks for giving us an update because it, it feels good to get someone who's there in the midst of it all and can report back to us what's happening. And I appreciate that. Thanks, Rose. Always enjoy coming on. Have a great same, day. Same here. You too. Take care.